seated. Good morning. Good morning. The Old Testament lesson is from Isaiah chapter 62, verses 1 through 5. This is entitled Zion's New Name. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not remain quiet till her righteousness shines out like the dawn, her salvation like a blazing torch. The nations will see your righteousness, and all kings your glory. You will be called by a new name. The mouth of the Lord will be still. You will be a crown of splendor in the Lord's hand, a royal diamond in the hand of your God. No longer will they call you deserted, or name your land desolate. But you will be called Hesoda, and your land Beulah, for the Lord will take delight in you, and your land will be married. As a young man marries a maiden, so will your sons marry you. As the bridegroom rejoices over his bride, so will God rejoice over you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle lesson is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. This is entitled Spiritual Gifts. Now about spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that when you were pagan, somehow or other, you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore I tell you that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed, or no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts but the same Spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them in all men. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another, the message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of in healing by that one spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between spirits. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. And to still another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same spirit, and he gives them to each one just as he determines. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel lesson comes from the book of John, chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine they gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there, there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding twenty or thirty gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water. They filled them up and brought up to the brim. He said to them, Now, draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. And the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water came. The steward called upon the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, then the inferior wine, after the guests have become intoxicated. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church.
So first off, um, does everybody have one of these? Is there anybody who doesn't have one? Let's say that. If you don't have one, raise your hand. Okay. So with that in mind, I'm going to ask you all to do something. And um, what I would like you to do is take that piece that you have and hold on to it and come and sit in the first two pews here and the first two pews over here. Thing to do. 
Jesus and the disciples gather, and they're there for the wedding. Now, these days, weddings took days, almost a full week of celebrations. You need 40 plus gallons of wine to last the days of partying. It was a big deal. Jesus and the disciples are there. And it's important. Jesus knows that they need the break. They need the time together to celebrate. To understand one another. To see and build relationships with one another. Jesus might have been easier for us to Jesus have. Pick one really good disciple who was really articulate at writing and really took good notes all along the journey. That's not what we get in our Bible. We get all these Gospels and all these letters, and sometimes they contradict each other, and sometimes they tell the story a little bit differently. They're not all the same. And they, well, you know, like being a disciple, maybe it would have been easier if they'd been there. Maybe if we had just one really good writer, it'd be easier. But it's not. I don't think that's what Jesus wants for us. It's that we have the gift of diversity, of more than one point of view. Each, if, if I, you know, if I stand in one spot and I tell you about what God looks, I get a slice of the picture. I see what God looks. But when you take somebody else's point of view and you add to it, and you add to it. You get a whole community of people seeing God, experiencing who God is firsthand, sharing that with each other. Each time, you get a bigger and bigger and bigger picture of who God is. We can't do it ourselves. We need the people around us people close to us to celebrate, to help us see the bigger picture. All right, now here comes the hard, comes the hard part. You each have a piece of the puzzle. And we need to put this puzzle together. And uh, we're going to put it together here on this. Now, if standing is uh, not easy or comfortable for you, um, you need to give your puzzle piece to someone who can uh, stand a little bit easier. And, and uh, then you need to coach them from where you're sitting about where it goes, nice and loud, so that they can hear you. So I really picture this as a loud, chaotic, and uh, almost troublesome kind of event here. But we're going to put this puzzle together. So bring your pieces up. Let's put it together.
I must say that we are a very good looking church and it's very clear on this Sunday this Sunday that the picture was taken up and today Sunday that we're having a good time and that is important Jesus turned the wine to water because this community is important it's essential we might hear God's voice but we need a community a Christian community to help hear a bigger story, help imagine God's call in ways that are beyond our own experience. Each one of us is a piece of the puzzle, and each one of us is essential. If we take away a piece of the puzzle, it's not done. It's not all there. And we're always in the process of trying to include greater diversity, greater points of view, so that we can hear and respond to who God is, who God is calling us to become here and now, in this very moment. Our, our 
sermon hymn is number 17. Will you stand and join me? Thank you. 